Who? Freeze, Ant! Humph! For presentation of awards, Brigadier General James A. Melvin III to be presented by the Adjutant General of North Carolina. Citation to accompany the award of the Legion of Merit to James A. Melvin III. Brigadier General James A. Melvin III distinguished himself by exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding services to the United States as Commander, North Carolina Air National Guard, Charlotte, North Carolina from 1 October 1986 to 14 February 1993. During this period, General Melvin's comprehensive knowledge of the military, his insight into problem areas, and his ability to affect full utilization of all available resources significantly enhanced the readiness capability of the North Carolina Air National Guard and served as an example for others to emulate. He professionally represented the North Carolina Air National Guard, both at the state and national level. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of General Melvin culminate a long and distinguished career in the service of his country and reflect great credit upon himself, the Air National Guard, and the United States Air Force. Given under his hand this 30th day of November 1992, signed by Philip A. Kelly, Director of the Air National Guard. Department of the Army, this is to certify that the Secretary of the Army has awarded the Army Commendation Medal to Brigadier General James Alexander Melvin III, North Carolina Air National Guard, for exceptionally meritorious service as Commander, North Carolina Air National Guard, during the period 1 March 1989 to 1 February 1993. 
Brigadier General Melvin demonstrated exemplary leadership and professional competence in all facets of joint operations. His noteworthy support has significantly enhanced the combat readiness of the Air National Guard. His personal involvement in the Air Liaison Officer Program has produced a role model for others to follow. Brigadier General Melvin's commendable performance of duty is in keeping with the highest traditions of the military and reflects great credit upon himself, the North Carolina National Guard, and the National Guard of the United States. Given under my hand in the city of Washington this 13th day of November 1992, signed by Nathaniel H. Robb, Jr., Major General, North Carolina Army National Guard, Adjutant General, and Michael P. W. Stone, Secretary of the Army. The state of North Carolina, to all who shall see these presents, greetings. This is to certify that the governor of North Carolina, authorized by North Carolina General Statutes, has awarded the Distinguished Service Medal to Brigadier General James Alexander Melvin III, North Carolina Air National Guard, for exceptionally meritorious conduct as commander, headquarters, North Carolina Air National Guard, during the period 2 April 1988 to 14 February 1993. Brigadier General Mellon displayed comprehensive knowledge and insight into problem areas with an ability to affect full utilization of all available resources. Given under my hand in the city of Raleigh this 13th day of November 1992, James G. Martin, Governor of North Carolina. State of North Carolina, Department of Crime Control and Public Safety, Office of the Adjutant General, Raleigh, North Carolina, Special Order G-27. By direction of the Adjutant General, State of North Carolina, Colonel Charles D. Burnfield, 270-386450, is appointed Commander, Headquarters, North Carolina Air National Guard, 5225 Morris Field Drive, Charlotte, North Carolina, effective 7 February 1993, by order of the Secretary, Irvin R. Ellington, Jr., Colonel, North Carolina Air National Guard, Deputy Chief of Staff for ANG. Barbara, friends and family of General Melvin, general officers, guests, and men and women of the North Carolina National Guard. We gather here today for two purposes. First, to conduct a change of command, which we have just completed. Through the ages, leaders of great armies standing before their warriors have handed over the reins of command to their successors by passing the colors. This is a visual symbol of the transfer of authority and allegiance to the new leader. Today, the new leader is Brigadier General Charles Burnfield, a top quality officer, highly competent pilot, superb leader and manager formerly the commander of the 145th Tactical Airlift Group and the 156th Tactical Airlift Squadron and the Deputy Commander for Maintenance. He is well qualified to assume these duties. He knows maintenance. He knows training through both military and civilian work as the chief trainer for Delta Airlines and as a manager and a leader through his many assignments in civilian and in the military. We welcome Chuck and Sandy into this new command. The Air National Guard is in good hands. The second reason we're here today is to honor a great citizen soldier upon his retirement, Brigadier General James A. 
Skeets Melvin III, a man who for 38 years has served his community, his state, and his nation with distinction. The three awards given today ably tell the story. The Legion of Merit is the top federal award that is presented to a National Guard officer in peacetime. This was presented for his long and distinguished career to the Air Force and to the Air National Guard. The second is the Army Commendation Medal. And this is unique here today. This is the first ever to go to an Air National Guard officer in North Carolina. This was given in recognition of his extraordinary efforts to promote cooperation and coordination between the North Carolina Air National Guard and the Army National Guard, and thereby increasing the readiness of both organizations through joint operations. The third award was the North Carolina Distinguished Service Medal. Once again, the top award that the state of North Carolina can give to its citizen soldiers and airmen. This was given in honor of his 26 years of service with the North Carolina National Guard to his community, state, and nation. Barbara must share in this award in receiving this honor because she was instrumental in him earning this honor. For to be a successful citizen soldier requires a balance of many competing interests. Skeets epitomized the true citizen soldier to me. He had to balance family as a father and a husband and a grandfather. He had to balance business interests and ran a very successful business. He had to balance his military requirements and was a truly great officer. You've heard the term officer and gentleman. I think you see here before you a true officer and gentleman. If you had to define class, I think if you look at Skeets and Barbara, you could define it. He was a superb pilot, a leader's leader, and a true professional. He had the complete confidence of the governor, of the Secretary of Crime Control and Public Safety, and of the Adjutant General at all times. There's no question in anybody's mind who ran the Air National Guard while General Melvin was the commander. He was clearly in command in a quiet but firm manner and ran the organization superbly. Now, after 42 years in uniform, starting at the Citadel, I know it's going to be difficult to adjust to the change, but the difficult has never been a problem for Skeets. We wish you and Barbara well, come back often, and on behalf of a grateful state and nation, thank you. General Mel. Thank you, General Rod, for those kind remarks, and especially for bringing the Citadel bagpipe and drum band to this formation. That was a complete surprise to me. I played in the Citadel Band, marched in President Eisenhower's inaugural parade. I predated the pipes and the drum corps, uh, and I'm sorry to say that. General Mark Clark brought the pipes and the drum corps there. But it was a tremendous surprise to me, and gentlemen of the Corps, thank you very much for coming. It's a, it's a tremendous surprise, and it touches my heart. If I have had any success at all, it is because of a family that gave me total support, total love, and a man cannot survive and succeed in this world without that. It is because I had total support from the Adjutant General of North Carolina. When I was wrong, he told me. When I was right, he supported me. And we have moved a long way towards making the relationship between the Army and the Air National Guard firm and long-lasting. 
Finally, I have had the total and complete support of the finest group of people in the Air National Guard, from my senior enlisted advisor, who I think was the best decision I made as your commander, who understood that he worked not only for me, but that he worked for you and had a dual role. And with his support, I think we have done a fairly good job of treating our people well. And finally, I realize that all of this came to me not because of my choosing, because the Lord has been kind to me, and I'd like to acknowledge that. Having said that, I'd like to leave you with a farewell, and if Barbara will join me, the Melvin team's going to step out the door, and we're going to leave you with the best leadership, the best possible uh, situation you could be in, new facilities, new airplanes coming, and the best leadership in the Air National Guard. I see nothing but good things on the horizon for you, and just keep looking up and everything will be fine. Thank you. Squadron commanders, take charge of your squadrons.